Hi, this is COMP 1010 at the University of Manitoba. I'm Dr. Celine Latulip, and today I'm going to go through some tips and bugs to watch out for when you're working with Booleans and if statements. So tip number one is to store your Boolean values. If you're figuring out a calculation um, that's sort of complicated and you've got these compound uh, statements like this one is x greater than left and is x less than right, is y greater than top and is y less than bottom, then you don't want to have to do this over and over again if you might need this calculation again. So storing it in a Boolean variable like are we in the box, call this variable inbox, allows you to then use that. And this makes the code more readable. So here we have an if statement where we say if in box. And that just makes a lot more sense than reading all of this stuff. And then later on in our code, we can still use that variable again without having to recalculate it. So this is the same message we've been saying about using variables in general, but it's a good idea with Booleans as well. Okay. Tip number two is to understand that there's something called short circuiting. And so that means that if a condition is met, no further conditions in the if else if chain are actually going to be executed. So here we have some code that has um, a bug in it. So we're testing if mouse x is less than 500 and if 500 is the height of our, or the width of our screen, then this is probably going to be true while the mouse is on the screen. And so this is going to set our stroke value to white. Um, and this is going to cause everything else to be skipped. And so in fact, if we wanted our stroke color to be different in sort of the top 200 pixels, this is never going to be tested because this is going to be true. And so because of short circuiting, it's not like the computer says, oh, there's a bunch of conditions here. I better check each of them and see which one is true and do that. As soon as it hits one that's true, it skips everything else after it. So that means that the order of these if else's actually really matter. Um, okay. Tip number three, short circuiting also happens within a set of compound conditions. So remember compound conditions are when we have a bunch of Boolean expressions that are joined together by ands and ors. Um, so here we have this compound condition, um, if A is less than 10 or B is greater than five. And so we're going to evaluate this and if A is in fact less than 10, if A is say seven, then this expression right here is true. Well, when we have a compound condition that is an or, all we need is for one of them to be true and the whole thing is true. And so if this is true, we don't even bother evaluating this expression because this whole thing will be true and so we just keep moving forward. So B greater than five doesn't actually get tested. And similarly, in this situation, if we're there joined by an and, um, if A is seven, then we know that's true. For ands, they both have to be true, so we have to go and test this. But in this case, imagine A was 20. We test this and we say A is less than 10, 20 is less than 10, that's false. Well, now, because we've got a false here, we know that in this compound condition that where we're joined by and, both of these things have to be true to move forward. If this is false, it doesn't matter what this is, the whole thing is going to be false. So again, in that case, if this is false, if A is actually greater than 10, then we're never even going to evaluate the B greater than five condition here. Okay, so that's short circuiting. Some common bugs that you should really watch out for. So one of the things that people often do is when they have an if statement and there's only one statement that's going to be executed if the expression is true, they don't bother with the curly braces. And this is a really problematic habit because it causes all sorts of problems. It does work if you really only need that one statement to be the thing that's executed when the expression is true. But often it's it's quite confusing. And so people often indent to say like, this is the thing that's gonna be executed if this is true. But you may indent the next line too, thinking, oh yeah, I also want that to happen when this is true, but this will not happen based on this condition. This is actually going to happen no matter what, because if you look at this, it actually translates to this. 
only the one statement that happens after the if statement will actually be um, conditional on the value of this expression. And no matter what, all this other stuff that comes down here will be executed. So this can really cause a problem. So let's look over here at this example here. We have this processing program um, and we want to draw purple circles when the mouse is pressed. So we have our setup and a yellow background and then in draw we have if mouse pressed and we have fill it with purple and we have draw an ellipse. Um, and you may be able to look at this and guess what's going to happen. The issue here is that no matter what, um, we're going to draw an ellipse. This indentation is meaningless. We're going to draw an ellipse whether the mouse is pressed or not, and that's probably not what we want. Um, so always put the curly braces in and around the if block, even if you don't need it because there's only one statement. Um, and it makes changing things later easier, and it makes things a lot more reliable. So here's that, that example specifically. So we've got the draw program and the mouse pressed. What does this actually do? Well, it means the minute we start the sketch, we're going to be drawing ellipses, and they won't be purple yet because we won't have actually pressed the mouse button. Once we press the mouse button, then we've changed the fill color to purple, but then we, we're still drawing even after we stop pressing the mouse button. And that's because this ellipse command is not only happening when mouse pressed is true. So we can fix this by actually putting in the uh, curly braces, which we wanted around both of these statements. And now we only draw the ellipse when the mouse is pressed. So we don't have ellipses being drawn right away from the beginning. And the ellipses are only purple. We don't end up with white ellipses before we've actually um, drawn purple ellipses. So always use the curly braces, even when you don't need to because you've only got one statement after the if that's um, conditional on the expression. Second bug to really watch out for is the single equal sign versus the double equal sign. So we always want to use the double equal sign for testing equality. So um, it's hard to get this wrong in processing or Java because things will actually um, be tested. So here we've got an example where we have uh, Boolean B and we're setting it equal to is 10 less than zero. So this is false. And then here we're saying if B equals true, but we're using the assignment equals. So we're actually setting B to be true. And then this will draw a line. And this is not testing whether this B that we set up here is true. It's actually setting it to true, which is not what we want to happen. Um, similarly, down here, we have a, a, an example with an int. We have int z equals 20. And then here we say if z equals 30. And this is not testing whether 20 equals 30. This is assigning 30 into the variable z, um, which is not what we want. But processing actually stops us from making this mistake. It will give us this type mismatch. It will say int does not match with Boolean. I'm expecting a Boolean here. Um, and this is assigning an int. Um, it won't give us that same mismatch here in this case because we've actually got a Boolean. So you have to be really careful with this. All right, so the next bug is using the equals equals for floats. Um, because remember that floating point numbers are approximations. And if you do lots and lots of calculations, those numbers aren't always exactly what you think they're going to be. You might not have 15.0, you might have 14.997. Um, and so if you try to test a variable holding what you thought would be 15.0 to see it if equal to 15.0, but that variable is actually 14.99, then you're not going to get the result that you expect. So the best thing to do when you've got a situation like that is to use greater than or equal and or less than or equal. So if you think that this total is going to be 0.7, you can test it by saying is total greater than or equal to 0.699 and is total less than or equal to 0.701. And that gives you a little bit of wiggle room based on the fact that you know your float might be a slight approximation. Okay, and so that's a, a really good practice when you're working with floats. Okay, 
Another bug is a dangling else. So imagine we have something like this. We have if this, and then we have another nested if that, and then we have a statement that says do something, and then we have an else display an error. This else is ambiguous. Does this else belong to that if? Like if this isn't true, then do this. Or does it belong to this? If this isn't true, then do this. Um, so this, this is what we call a dangling else and it's confusing and can cause a lot of problems. So um, indentation, although maybe you indent it to, to show what you mean, that's irrelevant. The processing compiler does not look at your indentation and the answer could really make a big difference. So the rule is that the else always belongs to the closest unmatched if. So even though it looks like this else is matched with this if, it will actually be the else for this if. Um, so if you use curly braces, then you will avoid this problem completely. And that is all of my tips and bugs to watch out for when you are programming with Booleans and ifs. So thanks for watching.